There is a new NXT predictions champion for Match Bell. Hi guys, welcome back to Match Bell. Uh, we're here to review both night one and two of NXT Takeover: Stand and Deliver. Your money or your life. Um, joining me is Richard. He's recently risen from the dead today. Um, we didn't know if he was going to make it because he's had his COVID. Oh no, I can't say that word. Kind of, he's had his vaccine for this thing that's going on in the world, and it hit me pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, hit him harder than Falter's chops. <laughs> Uh, right, let's just get straight into it. Uh, starting with night one, we got the first opening match of the main show of Pete Dunn versus Kushida. This match was a great what, what, opener. Wait, wait, I feel like you, you're skipping something what? here. Who's the champ? What? Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, we need to clarify this. I'm I'm a bit salty that I've uh, <laughs> that it's happened, but um, I'm glad you brought this up, Richard. Good. So after counting up the points over the two nights of TakeOver from our predictions, there is a new NXT predictions champion for Match Bell. Is it Steven? It's not Steven. <gasps> that means it's me. It is you. Well <laughs> done. So that means that this shiny belt is going out the window. I wonder what <laughs> SH word you were going to say then. <laughs> So that's now flying on its way over to your house. Um, I don't know how long shipping takes in the world of flinging things. You know, I'm only tiny, so I can't throw it that far. You live literally a mile away. I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah. Get an um, for I, it. I didn't disinfect it before I threw it, though, so you might need to spray Definitely. it before you catch it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's out of the way. Uh, so, yes, Pete Dunn versus Kushida. First match of the night. Great opener for night one. Gone. Just reminding myself to put a belt there. That's all. All oh, right. Okay. <laughs> what happened to clapping? We usually clap. Well, I don't have to do that when it's me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I. This match was sick. I. I was excited for this. Any one of them could have won, and I'd have loved the outcome of it. What way to start them? Start it. Yeah. Like, like if you if you're gonna be technical like technical wrestling on the mat as well, yeah. Like if this is this is how the whole two days are gonna be, then this is gonna be amazing. And it was like non-stop showing the main roster how it's done. Oh yeah, I think night one really achieved that though as well. But I think from watching it, I've <laughs> got a happy cat. <laughs> um, night one from going off it is like. Because it was on TV, I feel like they really tried to sell it, so people bought into getting this whole Peacock and possibly the network thing. Mm -hmm. So they put some stellar matches on on night one, um, and then I don't know. I'll share my opinion about night two after, but like night one started off with a bang, uh, and then it went into the the gauntlet match, which I thought was the weakest match on the card for the night. Um, like it wasn't. It was that a traditional gauntlet match? I thought that gauntlet matches were more. You have one match, and then after that match is finished, you go straight into the next one. Yeah, I. I think that is a gauntlet match, but this was a gauntlet eliminator match, so it's like a Royal Rumble, but pinning. Like just, just have them all in the ring. Just have a. Have an elimination match, like, like, like a battle royale thing. Yeah, definitely. I think because they had. Battle Royals to qualify for it. Well, yeah, uh, um, but yeah, I, I don't think Bronson Reed should have won. Um, like he was the, um, he, he's not he's not the most invested wrestler that I am. Like when I look at the, like I, where is it? Uh, I, I like Swerve. I like mm. uh Dexter. I like. Grimes, and then I'd probably put Leo, LA, and Bronson in the like the lower bracket. So it was it was yeah. a good like you didn't see this coming, but I would have preferred one of the other three to to win it. Yeah, I... especially with you having like I know, I know I predicted Grimes to win, but the Dexter's at least got a storyline there, so that would have made some sense. Yeah, that's it. Like that's why I predicted Dexter because. 
going through the storylines and from what I've seen bits of on NXT, I really need to concentrate more on watching NXT to watch these build-ups. But um, from what I saw in the build-ups that I did see, Isaiah and Leon obviously had a storyline because they started the match and they're feuding. Well, Leon's been champion as well before, hasn't he? Yeah. Like there was the whole uh, thing with... Um... Damien Priest. Damien Priest, yeah. Yeah, so that that made sense if Leon was going to win it, but he's got his storyline with Isaiah. Um, LA Knight has been having this thing with Bronson Reed because Bronson Reed ripped his jacket when he debuted or something like that. So that was that storyline. And then Dexter Loomis has had the whole abducting Austin Theory thing and Indy's in love with... Dexter Loomis now because we kept getting index references all night, which mm, did my head in. Really weird. Um, and then the only free person, apart from Dexter, to have that storyline with the way would have been Cameron Grimes. Mm. So Cameron Grimes or Dexter Loomis would have been the right ones to win it when you go logically. But Bronson Reed just he didn't do anything in the match. He spent half the time out of the ring. Yeah, um, I and... didn't. I didn't think he did well in the six pack challenge, but mm. on night two, which we'll get into, I do think he made a really good showing of himself, and mm. th- it was a good, um, like to say, most of the matches, apart from maybe the Raquel versus EO match, are very equal looking guys, or you know, like the very like the same build. Maybe not. Yeah. Um, Cross and Balor actually, uh, but like it was nice to see, it was it was a David versus Goliath where David is the one that you don't want to win. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> uh, right. Well, I think we covered that one. And speaking of a David versus Goliath, we got that in the next match, really, didn't we? With Man, the, this was ridiculous. The UK Championship match between Walter and Champa. This, this I mean, is what I was watching this for. This this is all I wanted to see. Yeah, this was this was great, and I'm I was watching it trying not to compare it to the Druganov match. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, but like that was niggling at the back of my head whilst I was watching it. But Champa put up a fight, and my main note that I wrote down was Champa's attacking Volta's hand. Stephen will like this. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he like props to. Volta for selling it, like well, the way he did. Props to the uh, announcers table for selling it because <laughs> it did a it did a, did a lot better of selling that than it did against uh, Kyle O'Reilly and uh, <laughs> and Adam Cole. <laughs> uh, they reinforced it after Volta chopped it in half, didn't they? Definitely. Yeah, my God, like this was. You wanted it to be a match of the pair of them just beating ten tons of crap out of each yeah. other. And I feel like it would have been too easy to have Champa win and like. You know the NXT UK brand is not as well known, maybe in the in America, but like to actually put it over was you know props to NXT for doing that. It was like when NXT won the Survivor Series, like yeah, it wasn't yeah, it sort of cemented it as a third brand, <laughs> um, which I don't. They keep going back and forth on that third brand thing, but I think it should be. It's better than the main roster. It is. Yeah. Well, right. to like proper wrestling fans, anyway. But yeah, yeah. Uh, right. Next match was the triple threat tag team match for the vacant NXT tag team championships. Uh, MSK Grizzled Young Veterans and Legado del Fantasma uh, were in this match, and MSK won. And Wesley was an absolute beast. He did. We both put this to get match, the pin, didn't we? <laughs> he probably took yeah. the the biggest. Uh, the biggest bump as well, didn't it? What did he take? Um, I, I, I don't know. To be honest, there was that many. It was a spot fest. There was that many moments in this match that you just got lost in it and like enjoyably lost in it. Yeah, I think so. Like the last time that NXT had a thing, um, I didn't watch this. I didn't watch MSK versus the Grizzly Young Vets. If you remember, I skipped it. Mm. And you were like, oh, you should have watched it. And I was like, mm, meh. Uh, but I, I did watch it this time, don't worry. Um, <laughs> and uh, it was it was very good. Uh, of the three tag teams in there, I actually liked 
Legado del Fantasma the most. Yeah, they uh, they really showed their team chemistry hmm. uh, properly in this match as well. Um, and I'm like, after that, I'm glad that they didn't eat the pin because yeah. it made them look better for it. Uh, not saying that Grizzle's Young Vets look weak by getting pinned, but um, it, obviously with what happened on last night's show, Legado del Fantasma needs to look like a stronger unit now um and i think it, it did them it did them well to come off the way they did in that match um and msk are well deserved of those titles as well mm. uh thoroughly enjoyed that but i think my I, that's my favorite match of night one actually the was tag it? match yeah um i think pete dunn kashida was my favorite just because it got it going and then i would have yeah. said walter Versus uh, Champa. Mm. I don't know. I, th- I just liked the speed of the match and the pacing was just there on the tag match. Mm. No, um, I, li- I liked it, but I'm just not invested in. The, you know, I don't know much of the backgrounds to the, the teams. I, you know, you know, without actually watching the NXT brand that much, I know who Pete Dunne is. I know Kushida. I know Walter. I know Champa. I know a lot of the big guys on there, and the tags they're just not. You know, uh, they're just not as well known to me as even as someone that doesn't watch it that much. Yeah, um, I'll give you that one because I think the tag division has been a bit of a joke recently. Because like Brazango won the titles not too long ago, um, and as as talented as they are, they're a joke team. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and you can't be having joke teams winning your belts. Um, but hopefully it'll elevate it now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's looking promising. Uh, then we got the final match of night one, which was the NXT Women's Championship match between Raquel Gonzalez with Dakota Kai accompanying her for a little bit um, and Io Shirai. Uh, Raquel's the new champion. Yeah, definitely. And well deserved we as well. It as well. Was good. Yeah. Did, you, did you predict it as well? Yeah. Uh, I think we all went for Raquel pinning. Um but then we had that little chat about movies well, are going to be shenanigans. Yeah, and she, she I mean, looks she looks amazing. Like she just looks like a great champion, which yeah, is nothing look- against Eo. Eo's been a great champion, and the balls on that woman, like jumping off, uh, like war games in a trash can, and the amount of and, yeah, and the moon amazing the moonsault and... she does. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot she did that during that match, didn't she? Yeah, she was great. Uh, and like we love Eo, but Raquel looks like she's going to be a really good champion. I hope it's a long raid as well. I hope so, because to build her up as much as they have, you can't give her a one week, two week, till the next pay-per-view or whatever oh, kind of raid. Yeah, like, say, it's, it's not even that yeah. for NXT. A, a, a short reign in NXT is four months. Like <laughs> a, yeah. short, a short reign on the main roster is uh, one night, apparently. Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll win it on the pay per view and I'll lose it on Monday Night Raw the night after. R.I.P. Miz, <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll face a celebrity at Mania. Um, yeah, no, this was a great way to end the pay per view. Um, it was it was awesome as well because like Dakota tried to get involved and she got caught out and then kicked out of the. Well, out of the ring area, and it showed that Raquel could do it on her own as well, and it needed to happen that way. Yeah, it was clean, which was good as well. Yeah, um, proper happy for her, and she even got like the pyro at the end, like proper celebration. Yeah, and she was there on night two as well in the crowd. Yeah, she looked. Good I think I think they really invested in her um, as a champ going forward, which is good. Uh, so, if you had to uh, score the whole of night one. Uh, out of five, what would you give it? Like a mm, like a four point five. It was yeah. really good. It was high. It was high. I, I was I was leaning towards like a four four point five, probably a four point seven five. It was yeah, yeah. pretty good. I, the only downside to night one, and I think it's just a it, it's one of them things. But I watched it on the network, and the Net, ad the break breaks bit, were a bit weird, weren't they? Yeah. The cutting sound and the black screens. Oh, did you get black took, screens? Took I yeah, get I black got black screens. screens. I just got uh, just got muted on mine. 
Uh, I got uh, I got muted segments and black screens, and it just really took me out of it That's right. for a minute. Plus, there was no warning when they were going to happen. No, I uh, think it's because well, there were some, on, and then on the actual random... peacock or whatever it is, uh, hmm. I think the adverts were like picture in picture. Oh yeah, so it, the action carried on. Yeah, so it would have carried on yeah. on peacock, but obviously for us, it, it, it wasn't. The same. Yeah. Right. So we move on to night two. Um, I, I'll give the pre-show match a quick honourable mention because we've got new tag team number one contenders. With yeah, Killian like they Jane mentioned that Maverick. they mentioned that during night two, and I was like, when did this happen? But now I'm looking at the results. Like it was the pre-show, weren't it? Yeah. Uh, so I didn't watch the pre-show, but good on them. Like that'll be an exciting match. Yeah, Drake so, Maverick. Uh, MSK deal with Killian Dane because Drake Maverick's just the, the punching bag in that team. Drake Maverick. I swear he got sacked. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> uh, right, moving on to the actual main part of the show. And the opening match was Again, the match of the night. Away. Are you serious? It was great. I enjoyed this a lot. Mate, no. Yes. No. Yes. No. This, no. Yes. No. Yes. Uh, right. No, we're allowed different opinions, but like this, for me, was a really lackluster opening. To call this a cruiserweight match and have it be as slow as it was, I liked it a lot. And definitely got murdered. It was almost a squash match. He did, but he also had a really good showing for himself. Like he didn't give up. The only yeah. The only reason that he probably didn't win the title was because of uh, El Fantasma yeah. coming down. Like I think I thought it was a good showing for both guys. This like I, I um I've not watched Escobar since uh, Lucha Underground, and I've never seen a Devlin match, and I'd really like both guys now. Uh, I highly recommend you um, watching Devlin versus Finn. Uh, no way, a Finn Balor match. You gonna... yeah, yeah, no, because <laughs> no, um, Finn is Devlin's mentor. Got you. Oh, well, they're both uh, from, from Ireland, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there was Finn Devlin and I think Devlin and Noam Dar, which was a really good match. Mm. I think they were both on UK takeovers. I might be wrong, but um, yeah, those matches definitely happened. They're out there somewhere. Find them. They're brilliant. Um, but yeah, I, I, like I started watching it and I was like, "This is really slow. Why is it slow? Your cruiser weights. What's going on?" And then I get that one of them needed to win, but there's not a secondary championship on the UK brand now, and they've got that weird Heritage Cup thing going on on the UK brand, but um. I don't know if we're going to have a NXT UK Cruiserweight champion now. And yeah. they'll just come back to the UK and they'll do a UK belt. Uh, but yeah, I I didn't enjoy this match for an opener. But I, There's going to be a theme with my uh, my opinions on Night 2, to be honest. Mm. You not, do you not like Night 2 as much? No. Oh, that's not a shame. Um, I enjoyed a few spots. Um, I, I enjoyed the referees leaning in and holding the ladders while spots were taking place. Did you notice that? I did notice that. Yeah, I was like, I was like oh, just, 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 <laughs> just pull the camera a little bit to the left, and you won't see that. Yeah. <laughs> I, did, um, I did enjoy the top-down view camera. Oh yeah, yeah. There are, there, was... The top-down view camera is always good in ladder matches, though. Yeah. How did you feel about the um, the belt height? I thought it was a little <laughs> low in comparison to. A previous matches that we've watched <laughs> the ladders weren't as big in this one uh if, if you don't know what we're talking about we previously watched uh what did we watch we've not released it yet oh we've not no it'll yeah. be coming in the next couple of days yeah. what was it i forgot uh well <laughs> spoilers it was a uh, kevin owens versus finn for the uh NXT Championship, which was also a ladder match, and uh, Richard thought the height of the belt in that match was insanely high. It was, especially for Kevin Owens with his tiny legs. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Moving on to the next match, we got the Women's Tag Team Championship match between Ember and Shotzi versus The Way. Now, just... if we're going for worst match of the night, I fully think that this was not as good Oh, as yeah, the, 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 this was awful. This was just weird. I'm glad we uh, agree. Like, yeah. Uh, I mean, this was just such a weird match. Shots are getting the living daylights beat out of her for the first half of the match. And that team coming out with the win, like the uh, the distribution of momentum in the matches on night two was just all over the place for me. Mm. Um and having like Candice and Indy getting all the offense in and not coming away with the championships. Yeah. Like I I know I, I I predicted the right team to win, but I I predicted the way to win. Yeah. It would have made sense for him to win like watching it. Like mm-hmm. they, they should have won. And um I I know it seemed clever in theory, but that double eclipse looked a bit sloppy at the end. Yeah, it did. Um and some of the stuff that Indy was doing with Candice looked a bit botchy as well, but I'm just not a big fan of Shotzi at all. I know, you know. It's just a bit, it's just a bit of a weird... Um, I, just, I, I, don't, I don't know what it is that I really don't like about her, but um, just like watching her wrestle, I'm just not a big fan at all. It's like you said, the, the entrance is better than the wrestling. Definitely, yeah. Um, and it, it, it was... On night two, and the uh, way it, the way had a well better entrance than than Ember Moon, and she, I, I was confused. They they come out and they had that much stuff on that I was like, "What am I looking at? What is this?" <laughs> and then they didn't even fire the cannon at the the opponents, and I was like, well, "That's a wasted opportunity. You could get some mm-hmm. some damaging early there. <laughs> <laughs> at least at least yeah. make it a t shirt cannon. Fucking heck. Yeah. Oh, that would be cool, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. No, I think they'll say. I think they'll save that for a main roster thing. Like they'll give her a t-shirt, kind of. Oh, a, please a, a don't media. put her on the main roster. It'll happen. <laughs> so the next match was the North American Championship match, that was Johnny Gargano and the winner from the Gauntlet Battle from the previous night, Bronson Reed. Uh, Johnny had Austin Theory in his corner with him, in his wrestling gear, which I, I don't get when people do that. If you're not wrestling, why are you in your gear? Yeah. Because even well, when, that's, that's even when uh, El Fantasma came out, they were in wrestling gear, were they? No. Weird. Strange. It makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, 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 this is where I started to enjoy the matches a little bit. Um, but it's a Johnny Gargano match. I'm going to enjoy it anyway. Definitely. Johnny can, yeah, he can do no wrong in my eyes. Um, great heel work. Uh, I even enjoyed Austin Theory, like propping his leg up on the rope at that point and mm-hmm. getting involved in the way he did. The whole he was searching for a body part to work and then he eventually found what was working and then he stuck with it. I really like that. Mm. Um, there was the. Oh, what did he do? He did that, that Seamus move, you know, where he. Crosses them on his back and then he just he's whizzed him into oh, the ring. Oh, he just lobbed him over the ropes, yeah, didn't he? Was, yeah, that was nice. That Seamus shouldn't have stopped doing that. That was a good move. Mm. He did, like Bronson Reed's one of those weirdly athletic, bigger blokes. Yeah, like the Mac from Lucha Underground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like his little cartwheel that he did at the start of the match as well. Yeah, uh, like, no. I didn't actually because it didn't look like Johnny Gargano's move properly connected, and then he still did. Oh it. no! Yeah, he missed him by a mile, but he still did it. And then he still did the wheel. Like, oh man, there was a there was a few shady spots like that though when he's trying to do his um, like the Hurricanrana kind of moves. Yeah, that it was good. It was a good match, uh, and you know, I enjoyed it. It was a good showcase of Bronson Reed's strength, I think. Like, if if you want to make a guy look, oh, I feel like I'm being too positive. Maybe a bit didn't beastie. like it. I'm, I'm I'm trying to think of a reason why I liked it, but I liked it because of Johnny Gargano. 
Mm. I didn't enjoy the match. I'm just going to, nah, put it out there. Nah, didn't like it. Fair enough. Oh, that's so annoying. I, do, I really want to be a beacon of positivity, but I just didn't like it. It's all right. I, I didn't enjoy the Cruiserweight match, but you did. So it's fine. Yeah. We'll like one of these now. It's okay. You won the predictions, man. Be happy. Yeah. <laughs> um. Right. And then we go on to our first uh, co-main event of the night. They were classing it as both. They were, they were both main yeah, events. Yeah, I they? thought it was a bit weird that this wasn't the main main event. But then mm-hmm. after watching the show, I can see why Kyle yeah. O'Reilly and Adam Cole was the main event. Probably because it was a forty-minute match, but no, probably because it's what you wanted to finish on, really. Yeah. Um, but before Kyle O'Reilly and Adam Cole, we got Karrion Cross versus Finn Balor for the NXT Championship. Yeah. Um, this was another weird one for the distribution of momentum in the match. I enjoyed this a lot. Um, I, I liked the package at the start where it was saying that both of them have lost championships not the way that they wanted to lose them, with mm-hmm. Finn losing the Universal Championship to injury and then Karrion Cross losing the NXT Championship to injury. Uh, I, I, I loved the whole Finn Balor in the ring when Cross came back and he was like, I've been expecting you. Like that's such cool, cool spot. I enjoyed that a lot. Uh, yeah. And just the package where it shows Finn Balor in the gym, uh, like training, like that was just amazing. And watching Karrion Cross saying, "Look, I'm just gonna strike him to death." Like I believed it. It was good, good stuff. Yeah. The promo was that. The, the promo package was great. Mm. Um, I follow Finn on Instagram as well, and. That, those are actually his workouts, <laughs> not just for the show. <laughs> like, the man does lift chains on his barbells uh, when he's doing chest presses and stuff. He's absolute monster for only five foot eleven. <laughs> only for, like, what, you, what you're saying? He's only a little bit taller than me. Like before you get your digs in, <laughs> um, he looks tiny compared to Cross, though. And I was like, oh. Yeah, Cross looked beast. Yeah, but like, yeah. Um, that slap that Finn gave him, oh, though. Yeah. <laughs> like, the match didn't really get going until that point because it was like they were both trying to figure each other out. And then yeah, they were, Finn they were was like, each other I just want to piss this guy off and then he'll make a mistake. So there was the slap, there was a couple of shots into the corner, and then Balor manages to move out of, one of, out of the way and cross elbows the ring post and then the match started to go from that point onwards which is really mm. you know it was a good way of doing it i like that finn was uh attacking the injured arm as well mm-hmm. that was good um but like i feel like finn got way too much offense for it really as the champ yeah what? no like, I don't know. It just it didn't seem right with Karrion winning, but it also felt like the win came out of nowhere because he just hit him across the back of the head. I didn't realise that was Karrion's well, new finisher. To be fair, finisher. He, he striked him a lot in the back of the head while he was on the mat. Yeah. Um, but I didn't I didn't realise that was Cross's new finisher sort mm. of thing. So it sort of it happened and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> No, I, it was good. It was a good finish to the match, and um, yeah, the new champion. What do you think Finn's gonna do now? Um, I don't know. It's a weird one because we got a lot of the demon in that promo package. We did, and he even had a little bit of paint on his chest. Yeah, didn't last for long that though, did it? <laughs> no, but like, but it lasted longer on carrying across his face. Yes. <laughs> um. I don't know, like, if he's going to bring the demon back, do you really want to take it off Carrying Cross just to give it back to Finn really soon? I know, it, I know, like, we just said it's four months, but, like, do you really want that to happen? But then if the demon loses, are you damaging the demon character? Because that's been built up to be a thing that doesn't really lose. That's very true. Uh, um, I, was, I was also thinking now that... Um... Finns might not be in the championship picture. Like there might be a whole Kyle O'Reilly and Finn versus Adam Cole and someone else bit going on for a bit. Because mm. there was the whole Adam Cole kicking Finn in the face, weren't there? There is. 
uh, and Roderick Strong's got to get involved in this. He does. He really somehow. does. Because he's a good and wrestler. Then, he is. Um, so you might be right, and I'll be excited to see that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Finn and Kyle are good chemistry together. Yeah, they look great together. Yeah. yeah. Especially when they faced each other, that was amazing. Yeah. Um, if that does follow- happen, who who would you have carrying cross face next? I don't know because the thing is, people are saying like, "Oh, Kyle O'Reilly's going to move up into that champion picture again." But then Pete Dunne was keeping an eye on proceedings. I do like Pete as Dunne. well. I do like Pete Dunne as well. <sighs> He's just got this face, hasn't he? Like, I really want to punch him, but I really <laughs> like respect and like the guy. Um, yeah, he's, he's just got that 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 teenage face that you hate. You know what I mean? Like he just looks like. <laughs> Even though he's like late twenties. Is he late twenties? He just looks like one of those. Oh, he just he comes. He just he just really well comes across as a knobhead, which I, and I like him, but I really don't like him at the same time. If you know what I mean, you know what I mean, don't you? Yeah. It, to, to be honest, we um we first saw him at a what culture wrestling event thing. And it was easy to hate the bloke. Yeah. Like, it just came out and you were like, yeah, you're a bell end. <laughs> <laughs> um, good job Liam's not on the video, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, right. So, yeah. New champion, Karrion Cross. I'll look forward to seeing what happens with him. I might actually tune in on Tuesday to see what goes on. Yeah. Um, there, was a couple, the, there was a couple of promos as well for people. Do you know who they are? Uh, apparently this, oh God, I forgot the name already, but the, the one that's got the little dog that's running around is Taya Valkyrie from Impact. Okay. I think it's Taya Valkyrie. Oh, someone Valkyrie. Anyway, her name uh, has changed to whatever that is. So that's her. Uh, and then there was that new bloke that was teasing the crowd, wasn't there? And it was the Japanese person from Night One, the Sarai girl. There was a few people. Uh, oh, she was tinier, weren't she? Yeah, but I'm scared now because I think Io's going to move up to the main roster, get ruined like every other NXT call up that isn't Asuka. Um, she might move up to the main roster and become Asuka's new tag partner for a bit. And then go back to, <laughs> go back to Japan when she figures it's not working out. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I I think I'm gonna tune in on Tuesday just to catch up on all yeah, the storylines. Just to see where it's all going. I, yeah, yeah, I, I going. do fancy it. Um, but then we got our proper main event of the night, the unsanctioned Ooh, match. You know what? Oh, before really, you do, yeah. I just realised who I want cross to face. Oh God, Champa. <gasps> oh. Like although he lost, like that'd be a nice match. I'd like that because he's like it's. It's the NXT Championship in the UK. Like, it's not like he can just carry on the storyline there, is it? Because you know, one and done and back to the UK. So he's not really got a, a thing to do now. So maybe that's a an option. I'd I'd watch that. Yeah, definitely. I'd uh, I'd be up for that. That'd be a good match. I interrupted Gosh. you anyway. Sorry. Go on. Go for it. Uh, yeah, no, uh, just moving on to the next match was the uh, the Kyle Riley and Adam Cole match. This was a fight. <laughs> How long was it? Like, yeah, 40 minutes. Yeah, just Ooh. over 40 minutes. Um, like, I, I checked the timestamp when I got to the end of the Cross and Bala match, and I was like, we got a while to go yet. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I think I did the same, actually. Yeah. Um, it This match had everything... Chairs, chains, toolboxes, flat screen TVs, you name it, someone got hit with it. Yeah, if like, going, going through the stage was it at one point. Uh, was, you could believe that they were out to kill each other. There's some really good spots. I liked the bit on the stage. I liked the, 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 like, the clothesline thing with the chain. That was cool. Yeah. I liked uh, the wrapping it around his leg and hitting him with that. Yeah, the, the thing that actually ended it. Um, that as well, yeah. There was a couple yeah. of times where he'd like wrap it around himself and then like do a submission as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they were really inventive with the weapons. Um, can't fault them at all. Like it was 
great for essentially a hardcore match. Mm-hmm. Um, the idea that the the referee wasn't in referee stuff because it was an unsanctioned yeah, it, match. Yeah, they just said like the officials just here to record. Um, just the, excuse me, the, uh, record a pinfall or a submission. And then for uh, Adam Cole to knock the referee out and then try a pin attempt to be like, why are you out cold? <laughs> oh, man. You've got to get a, a slightly stupid segment in a match like that. You do. You? As soon as that happened, you knew he was losing. Yeah. Um, but I still enjoyed it. This was best match of the night for me. Like, it got the yeah. build was there. I went into it saying this is going to be a fight. It's not going to be a wrestling match. It's going to be a fight. Mm-hmm. And you're going to think they're going to try and kill each other. And going through it, I was like, you're going to kill each other. Even going down to that last shot of Cole shaking. Oh, yeah, I know. From the hit yeah, yeah. and um, getting put on a stretcher. And even Kyle struggling when he's walking back. Um top-notch selling from the boys and it's another reason why i'm thinking of going back to like going to watch it on tuesday kind of thing to see, see what the outcome of this is definitely yeah. yeah no it was great it was uh, even the uh the spot on the announcer table where it no sold that was good <laughs> kyle o'reilly getting off and getting up with bits of paper stuck to him <laughs> Oh, no, it, it was, was great. great. It was a really good match. I enjoyed it a lot. A lot. Yeah. It was great. It did um it it tried it, it redeemed night two a little bit in my eyes, but I still think night two was the weaker night. It is. Uh what did I give the first night? Four point five. I'd give night two a four. It wasn't as good. Yeah, I think I'd give it a three and a three point five. Uh I lost investment from the get-go um from my opinion because i know you like the ladder match but from my opinion two bad matches to start the show oh, the, um, yeah, the, the 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 tag the women's tag match was terrible yeah. i didn't like it um, at all. yeah two bad matches in my opinion just shut me out straight away um i even took a break from watching it for a bit because i was like no um but then it pulled it back with the last three matches. Um, even though I didn't get the distribution of momentum in the, in the, the Balor cross match, it was still a good match. Because mm. uh, I enjoy watching Finn regardless. Um, yeah. I don't know if you know. Big Finn mark. Um, but yeah, I like the, th- the last three matches were really good. Um, so I'll give it a, a, a three out of five. Because three out of five matches were good. So... Yeah. That's fair enough, yeah. Um but overall the two nights were good and we did get uh stand and deliver in the end. I forgot to mention that. We actually got stand and deliver with Poppy performing it. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was good. Uh, she's uh, so we, I didn't Adam expect the screamy bit, but yeah, it was very good. I enjoyed that. <laughs> Poppy's a weird one to listen to. Um Have you have you ever heard of Ginger? No, I'll, I'll show you after this. Like that's okay. a that's a that's a watch. Okay, fair enough. I'll check that one out. Um, uh, anyway, there was there I was think... another bit as well where I think it was after the Escobar match. He said he was the king of lucha, and I was like, oh, please put Ricochet down in the NXT and teach him a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a thing. Um... Oh, what was it? I think I saw it on Reddit. You know when he's like posing with uh, Del Fantasma and his son. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's like, "Did Ricochet come on stage to take a picture with him? Oh. Not Rick, not Ricochet. Uh, Kalisto come on stage to take a picture oh. with him." <laughs> oh man, they should they should do a WWE lucha. Maybe that's who's bought the lucha underground rights. Maybe that'd be good. We've had Raw Underground, haven't we? So, we have. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll get it. We'll, we'll we'll see. Anyway, that concludes our review of uh, nights one and two of NXT Takeover Stand and Deliver. Uh, if you've got any opinions of your own, stick them down in the comments below. If you enjoy the content that we're doing here, click uh, consider subscribing. It really help out the channel and uh, smack the like button. Like there's no tomorrow. Uh, I've been Alex. This has been Richard.
and we'll see you in the future. <laughs> see you later. <laughs>